All right, in this video, let me show you what we're going to be doing. There was a, a tremendous amount of rust pinholes all down through here in this up bottom flange. I also had quite a few up here in the face of this inner panel. We're replacing this piece with this piece. Simple, huh? So uh, I'll show you how I made this and we'll get it welded in. had quite a number of pinholes up here that I've, I've went ahead and welded up here is the patch the center patch that I've already welded in I have a video I had the video on that I welded all those rust pinholes on the bottom side of that side and I did that one in place upside down welding and grinding which is no fun so on this side I, this side I decided to get smart and just make a patch piece and hang on I'll show you what, what I got I actually remembered this time to film this before I welded it up this is the piece I cut out it went in the truck you know here's the there's the bottom It's in a truck like this windshield windshield is right here so here's the bottom flange full of pent rust holes and I'll use my light trick to show you um, pardon the glare for a moment see all the holes in, in the flashlight that's all rust pinholes and there's bukus of them a whole bunch and on the other side on the passenger side let's see if I can show you like this I welded all these holes up in the truck upside down um, there actually wasn't as many on that side as there are in this piece and welding upside down and grinding upside down, all that upside down work, that's, a, that's all a pain in the butt. So I thought I'd try on this side, it'd be easier just to make a patch and put in here. That way, only welding I have to do upside, upside down is the two edges right here. And then I cut the seam. This is the corner, the seam with the dash or the inner panel right here. So I, I'll be welding, you know, basically... Um, in front of me flat down this corner not upside down and that's gonna make it much much easier to weld so here's the patch I made so it goes in here's the flange so it would go in this piece would be that be the the, the flange the flat flange the windshields here so here's the patch I made flat flange and the windshield is here so that's that's the patch I made so um, anyway, we're going to weld. We're replacing this. We're replacing this piece with this piece. Simple, huh? So uh, I'll show you how I made this, and we'll get it welded in. So I'm going to do over here what I should have done over there. I'm going to make a patch and weld it in over here. Now, so I don't have to bend the interface here, which was putting this shape in it. That's a lot of work. Uh, I'm going to just, just patch just the underneath flange. So I'm going to cut it through the flange all the way down through on both sides and then cut right down the edge of the crease and then weld it back in again along the edge of the crease and just have to weld it up upside down here right, right here on the two sides. That will be much easier, much less work than all that upside down welding and grinding. So I'm going to bend up a piece on the other side of my shop. My brake's buried in a bunch of stuff. I, I can't even get a camera back there. So I'm going to bend up a little angle section and we'll get out the shrinker. Then I'll take my shrinker and I'll, I'll shrink the flange to put the curve in it. And I'll show you that in just a moment when I get ready to do it. So for now I'm going to go bend that uh, piece up off camera. Get everything set up over here a little bit better camera wise and then I'll come back and we'll get to work. Alright, this is my shrinker. Um, to make the shrinker and make a stretcher. This is actually a, this is actually a Lancaster stretcher it's not a Chinese knockoff I bought this from um, metal shaping place quite a few years ago uh, anyway they have shrinkers they have stretchers what they do there's there's jaws in here that when they squeeze they gather the metal or they spread it out uh, that's not a very good explanation but you can get on the web and find you know good explanations um, how these things actually work so when you shrink 
like you, you made a, I made this flange here. So when I shrink this edge, actually when I shrink this edge here, the metal is going, metal is going to gather. It's going to start to form into a curve. You can actually make curved shapes, and I've got a couple of videos where I've shown doing it on my on some on my forward. Or if you stretch it, the metal metal expands, and it'll actually turn it into a curve. You know this way. So what I'm going to do is just put some very light shrinks along this, this top edge here and I'm going to get that gradual arc started. Um, I don't have a camera set up to go back and forth, back and forth, so I'm just going to do a round of shrinks here, let you see how that works. And then uh, we'll go fit it on the truck and see how it's fitting and then I'm going to come back and shrink off camera so I don't have to keep moving back and forth. That would be a real pain, obviously. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Not a lot to see. It's just a, you know it's a mechanical force. So, and uh, this is 18. I think I have here a piece of 18. Could be a piece of 19. I don't remember. So you don't want to just get in there and caveman it as hard as you can to start with. Now this this the dies in this one have given me a little bit of trouble over time. So. Um, I'm just going to go easy here. And another thing you can do, especially if you're new to this, you can make marks along here with a marker. And I'll just do it to show you right quick. So you can give yourself indicator marks along the flange, say about an inch apart. And I'm just guessing, but this is about what these are. And what this does especially when you're having to make multiple passes and you're trying to sneak up on something which is where you should do it it's important to kind of to know where you've been shrinking or not shrinking you can also see the see the you can also see the the jaw marks to know where you've been but once you do that three or four passes you know you kind of lose that reference so these lines let you know kind of where you've been shrinking and not shrinking uh, to try to give you some repeatability Oh, it is raining. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put them on the top side too. Um, so I can see when I'm very still in the jaws. So I just I just made a little reference point marks about an inch or so apart. Nothing fancy. So this, this, the flange I'm going to shrink on, this is the lower flange. It'll actually fit in the truck like this. And it's bent on the, actually, sorry, fits like this. This is the flat, the flat flange and this is the windshield right here. This is about a 60 degree angle I've been in my brake. So let's see what happens here. Try to get this to work. It should work. You can kind of feel the, the metal giving when you pull the handle and you can see it too. Very slight, but you can. You know, I'm not pulling on it extremely hard. I just want to get a little light curve in this thing. And then go check it. You can certainly go too far real quick. And then you then you gotta go back and shrink. I'm sorry, stretch to unshrink it. Now that's definitely got a curve in it. Put a little more in the outside. And that you can take like you know smaller nibbles in the middle if you need to to kind of get a better curve. So hopefully you can see. Let me see if I can see it. Hopefully you can see there's a definite curve. You know right here now. Certainly not straight anymore. Let me get a ruler. So here's how much curve we put into it with that little bit of shrinking. Um, so what I'm going to go do now is put it against the truck and fit it and see how it fits. And I won't come back to the shrinker anymore. You've seen how it works. So these things are cool. They work really well. They sh and it, you know, if I go too far, I have to stretch and it'll it'll take it the opposite way and take some curve out of it. But there, that's just how that's how a shrinker works. It's really simple. When it works right, when it works correctly, and you have the jaws in correctly, ding dong. Anyway, let's let's move to the truck and see what, see how it fits. 
actually I changed my mind. I'll just keep the camera over here while I'm while I'm getting it to, to fit. So I've got plenty of curve. And as I just said, those extra oomps I gave it out here on the end are too much. So I'm gonna have to go back and stretch to get some of this curve out. The middle looks pretty good. Also, when I was when I was stretching, it put a curve in the in the flange this way that I don't want. Uh, again, let me get a ruler. So here's the side I do want to curve in. This is the side I don't want to curve in. You can see how it curled it. When it shrunk in the middle, it, it put a curve here too. So I got to straighten that on the table with a hammer. So we'll just work that back down. All right, we still got too much extra curve out here on the ends both in both directions. But first I'm going to try and use a pair of gloves. Um, this is like, it'll hurt this will hurt your hands like this. First thing I'm gonna do is just kind of take it off the table and you really can't see I'm gonna lift up and hammer down some. Yeah. All right, it's getting really close. There's probably some shape, you know. This this is the flange, the flat flange in the windshield, or in the in the cab cab inner roof. There's probably some shape in that roof too that's allowing this thing not to fit quite right. So in my piece that I made. Um, you can see it's pretty flat. It's actually got too much. This it's still hit. It's flat in the center. So what I need to do, I need to bring the, the center down a little bit. So there's lots of ways to do that. I'm going to use the old body man trick. Body man's best friend. I'm going to set it up on two blocks of wood. To get where I can see. Maybe you can see here. So I got I got a couple blocks of wood here to raise it up off the table. So the ends are supported. So the ends are supported uh, on each end, and the middle is not. So naturally, when I hit in the middle, it's gonna it's gonna bend and spring it up. But I don't want to just beat the crap out of it. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna set it here. I'm gonna take a spoon. I, I'm talking about my dolly, my body spoons. And just put the spoon to hold it. First of all, this holds it where I want it. It also keeps me from making hammer marks with my hammer. And just a couple light hits here. And let's see how much we can get to move without going too far. <laughs> that was a little harder than it should have been. Alright, I didn't put a huge amount of curl in it, but I put some in it. You can see that. So let me go. Let me go fit this right quick. All right, that is almost what we need. We need a little bit more. I don't the end out here, which is kind of what I figured. So not getting it near as hard as I heard you hit that first time. I didn't hit it hard that first time, but I hit it pretty good. Put a little out on this end too. That was more on the block of wood than anything else. And I know this is this is some tedious mess, but this is what it takes. Metal shaping or forming, whatever you want to call it. This is this is the process. It takes time. You gotta sneak up on it. Don't get there and try to caveman and get it all at once unless you really know what you're doing. I mean if you're experienced and know what you're doing and can do it, by all means. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at it, but I still like to sneak up on stuff, take my time, not overdo it. Alright, one more fit. Alright, this is fitting really good, except for on this outer edge. It just don't want to curl down quite enough. 
goes in the truck like this. Here's the here's the top. This is the windshield. This end out here just don't want to don't quite want to cooperate. It needs to it needs to come back up a little bit. Um, I think what I'm going to do is stop here because, like I said, it fits it fits really good except for the very end. And if I have if I have to, I can actually stretch this edge right here, and that'll push that'll push this flange right here up a little bit. Which, if you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, that's what it needs. It needs to roll up a little bit right out here. So just another pass across the table with a hammer. Get the heck out of it. Shrinking is done, and the shaping I think is done. Again, I'll show you with the ruler. That's there's how much we we shrunk it to get that curve in it. You can see the ends, and then uh, the end the end on the in the in the truck the the, the flange it needed to have a little bit of curl in it too. You can see there's a small amount of curl in there too. All right, let me uh. Move the camera, I'll go show you how it fits in the truck, and then we'll be on to cutting the piece out and trying to get this to fit, jam up. All right, I'm not sure how you can see this. Now here's, like I said, here's where we're making the patch to go right here. So I had to fit this curve here, and there's a little bit of shape in this up here. So that's about where my patch is gonna go. It fits really well. It's not perfect, but I haven't cut this section out yet, and that's that always affects your fitness. So um, it's not perfect, but it's darn close. So I need to go ahead and cut out what I'm going to replace. So let me get up inside of here and kind of see. Uh, I'm going to trim some of that down. I'm pretty sure. So I just got to get up inside here so I can see what I'm doing. Anyway, the original patch stopped about, stopped right here. And there's pinholes all the way up to it down this bottom plane. So I'm going to cut it just a little bit off of my weld. And I, where I welded my patch in. Only because I welded up that edge right there. And it should be pretty pretty thick with weldy back up in there. I mean, it, six to one half dozen the other. At this point, it don't really matter where you cut it. Just got to cut it. And then down through here, the last, the last bad pinhole, there's one here, and I got, damn it. There's one here, and a little bitty smaller one right over here. So, yeah, I think that's, that's going to fit about right. But the other way, it's, uh, I mean, it, it would fit that way too, but, Batter this away. So there we go. I, I made the decision. I'm cutting it right there. So let me cut this out, and then I also got to rough in my patch cut. I'm going to rough it in first. I'm going to cut it, you know, a half inch or so short on each side to start with to give me some clearance, clearance. And of course, I got to cut the bottom flange right here. All right, let's cut this out, see what we can do. I'm going to cut the bottom seam. Well, I'm going to cut the edge first and then cut the flash, the flange out. That's just kind of how I want to do it. I think I'll just cut the flange and then hit the, hit the spot wells. We'll see. I'll figure out something. Let's just get it cut out. How about that? Be sure you wear your safety gear. You know, even somebody stubborn like me, and I bet these goggles are fixing to fog up, so we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut right along this edge here, and then we'll go from there.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these two edges. I save my smaller cutoff wheels when they get worn down. There's a, these are great for getting down these little tight places. Um, so we'll do that first. All right, now go along and find my spot wheels and drill them out. I've shown you a spot load cutter before. The way I do it is I drill an eighth inch pilot hole, either partially away or sometimes all the way through. Depends on what I'm doing. Your spot weld bit has a point, or this one has a drill bit. Some have to have a point to guide it down in the hole. If you want, you can, uh, it's usually a good idea, and I forgot to get a center punch and punch those holes, especially in a, in a spot weld that's dished, your bit's gonna walk. So I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna go grab a center punch. I should have done that already. I forgot. I try to use I try to use cutting oil on these on all my cutting tools, drill bits, all this kind of stuff because it just makes them cut better and last longer. If you got an area that you're gonna weld back and you've got cutting oil on it, yeah that can be a problem, but normally you wind up cleaning it out or in this place, in this case, this flame's not gonna be welded back. So what do I care about cutting oil? So spot wheel, spot wheel home is done. So we're finished with that. Let me cut this. Be careful of my eyes. probably come off. There we go. So I'll give you a close up in a second with some light. That's that's all the nasty that was back up behind there. Now I realize all that crap is still around that side and that side and I realize that and I know that what I've done did <laughs> sorry rat rod Bob what I've done did I sprayed Ospo all, when I had this center patch out, I sprayed Ospo all up in here. I squirted it as far as I could get. Had it all running down in the, in the jams and the pillars. There's, there, so there's a heavy coating of Ospo up in here on this. So that's part of the reason some of my wells weren't that great because that Ospo is uh, welded on top of Ospo. Not, not, you know, it, causes a lot of spitting and sputter. It's not great to weld on top of it. You can do it. I've done it, but it's kind of like galvanizing away, although it's a different chemical formula, but it, it doesn't weld up on that great. So that's anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. So what I'm going to, what I've already done, like I said, I sprayed also up in here. As soon as I get my patch, patch finished up and made, come on, break off. Gum it. So as soon as I get my patch made up, 
and got this, get this area down here completely cut out the way I want it. I'm going to ice it again and then shoot some more primer up in here and let it dry overnight. So I won't actually be welding this patch in until tomorrow. <laughs> Dolly this flange just a little bit. It's pretty straight. Now let's see what we get. I got to mark the front. I got to mark where I'm going to cut the front. So I marked the back side. I don't think you can see here. Let me go cut that off. I don't want to do it sitting here. I got to change grinder wheels anyway. So let me go uh, do that and I'll be back. That's the flange I cut off. And uh, of course that's, it was on the windshield like, like this. So that, this is the edge that I got, has all those pinholes up under there. Quite a lot of them actually. All right, I got this flange fit. Let me grind the burr off. This is what I thought it was going to be. Alright, let me trim back to it. I cut it. I cut it. I cut it on the strong side of the line, which means the big side. So let me come back and grind it down a little bit. Make it fit better. I got to get this corner right here too. these before these are duckbill pliers you can see the, the shape of the jaw and know why they call duckbills uh, they're great for working on flanges stuff like this you can also use these basket flanging pliers which they're wider you know give you a better grip but on smaller engines and stuff well, I just kind of prefer using these I'll get better control I'm just gonna bend the angle here is not perfectly perfect so, uh, it's damn close. I just gotta bend it down just a little bit. And I know you can't see my hands. I'm just taking this flange and bending it down a little. And by a little, I mean a very small amount. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright, I need to put some more shape in the middle now. Put some more shape in the middle, alright? I shaped it too much. Let me unshape it some if I can. With the part with my duck bills. Let's get them there. That's about what I want to see right there. Alright, let me go uh, let me go straighten this out a little bit with a hammer. And then uh, we'll come back and clamp it in there and see what we got. Alright, that looks pretty good right there. Let me see if I can put a clamp on it and see how bad it distorts it. Oh fudge. I can't get this clamp in there. Um, I'll put my magnets up here. These are my little stitch magnets. Things work good. They can be annoying, but they work good too. Alright. So, uh, and again, we got glare, but without light, you can't see anything. So, there's the there's the overall view of it. Patches from here to here. As you can see, I left this edge long on purpose. I'll come back and cut that later after I get it all welded in. There's the seam where the where I'm going to weld it down the angle, the corner, the ridge. The bottom, as you can see, matches up pretty good, really well. The corners. So that's that's kind of all there is to see. Um, it fits. Let me show you from the outside. Kind of get an idea of the shape of it, because I can't do it from in here. So here's the edge of the windshield. As you can see, there's a fair amount of curve to it right here. Not a huge amount, but it's definitely in there. Certainly not flat. So that's where I had to work the shape back into it, right in here, to get it to fit. There's what appears to be a big gap or a low spot, high spot here. That's that's a double panel. There's a double panel inside this flange right here. I got a hammer and dolly that down when I start welding. As I said before, I'll come back and cut this flange off right here. Um, no sense cutting it now. You don't have to. That's just another spot to, you know, possibly cut wrong and get a get it not shaped correctly. So I'll cut it after I'm done. Um, you can see it from this side. I mean, there's a gap here that I got to weld up, and I hate that, but it happened. It, you know, as I was getting this fit, if I had thought about it ahead of time, I would have put some shape back in there. I just didn't think about it. Just made a mistake. Um, I may even push this in a little bit, although it's not flexing much. So... Anyhow, panel's made. I guess I'll go ahead and... I could end this video here, but I guess I won't. So my next step, as far as welding the panel, the patch in, I'm going to take it down. I want to ospo all back up in here again, just because I can get access to it again, just, just to spray some on there. Let it dry overnight, and then I'm going to prime... My back of my patch, I'm going to prime with some with some primer. I've got some spray can. Uh, I'm going to spray on the back of here, and I'll also spray the the drip rail, the, the flange on the inside after it dries tomorrow. And then put my weld through primer on it, 
and let all that sit until tomorrow sometime and I'll be welding it back in tomorrow I guess before I weld this thing up and yada and whatever I'll get this I'll show you the patch you know is it outside of the truck so there's the curve in it um, there's you can kind of see how much curve it's got in it that on the flange and then the shape I put into it where it fits against the back of the windshield you know is right there um, definitely does not is definitely is not flat the, the, this flange here is pretty flat but the side against the windshield definitely is not flat which is that side right there so that's, there's a fair amount of curve in it now it looks a little bit wampus caddy wampus here and it is but I'll work this is the flange I'm going to work out as I weld it in no 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 I'll take that back this is the flange that gets welded in this edge over here gets cut off this flange is down in the in the in the windshield pinch rail. So that that that'll all be straightened out when I do that. So anyway, that's that's the patch as I made it, as it as it's ready to go back in. Not a not a not a uh, what's the word complicated, not a complicated piece, but it does have shape in it. You know, I've talked about shrinker stretchers. This like I said, these are Lancasters. They got paid. Between three and four hundred bucks for this pair a few years ago. Um, don't know what they cost now. You can get them at Harbor Freight for probably under two hundred bucks. Uh, I know a lot of folks use the Harbor Freight ones. Well, it's the ones you see that are blue and yellow a lot. And there's other Chinese brands too. But anyway, the ones at Harbor Freight and it, the people I've seen using them on YouTube, they seem to work. So if you're going to do metal shaping, that's one of the first things I, I think, at least I think you should get as a shrinker and a stretcher. I've got some other videos where I made some parts, a curved dog bone flange and you know stuff that you can, a shrinker really really works. Um, if you're making stuff like this you really ought to have a set. They don't cost that much. Anyway let me uh, let me get to moving and we'll try to get this thing ready to prime in, uh, weld, prime and weld in. So that's it for this video. Um, for those of you that stuck around till the end, thank you I appreciate it. So anyway, like I said, thanks for being here. If you got to the very end, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, hope you like what you're seeing. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I'm not boring you to tears. If I am, let me know. Well, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, that's it for this one. And I will catch you on the flip side. Y'all come back now, you hear? Yeehaw!